Hey y'all, it's Base Kato and I'm back with another video. So today I wanted to do another chit chat video since you guys seem to really like the chit chat videos. I did have a few topics that I wanted to discuss. So if you're interested, then stay tuned and let's go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I actually wanted to discuss, which I need to bring the product day with me. So I'm gonna show you guys what I got from Ulta the other day. So what I got from Ulta is like a staple product that I always use, which is basically the Benefit Precisely Brow in the shape 4.5. So yeah, I just got these two brow pencils. And I always get two because this is my thing with the Benefit Brow Pencil. I wish the brow pencil came with some type of indicator that tells you that you're getting low on your product and you need to buy more because the brow pencil that I was using right before I ran out, I filled in like the first side. But then the second side, it's like it was almost filled in and then it snapped apart and I tried to twist it up and nothing came up. I was like, oh my gosh, like I, it's like, bro, I really thought I had more product in here. But okay, let me go ahead and get into the first topic. So the first topic that I wrote down is that clubs are getting boring to me, y'all. Like, for real. I have not gone out since my birthday, which was like March 6th. Actually, I lied. I did go out like at the end of March to this club called Topango or Topango. Wait, Topanga City? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that club is called. That club, Topanga City, is right behind 1145. So if you're from Atlanta, you'll know where I'm talking about. But yeah, so I went there and that was cool. But after Topanga City, I really haven't gone out in general. The reason why I haven't really gone out is because I'm just kind of tired of going out at the moment. The club scene, at least in Atlanta, it feels like it's the same thing every night. I've been in Atlanta for five years now. So I've been to pretty much most of like the top clubs here. I know all the promoters, even if I don't know them, like actually know them, it's like we've seen each other. Most multiple times. It's always the same celebrities and like influencers that go to the clubs. The club scene is just getting boring. It's the same thing and it's also getting more expensive in my opinion. I mean, mind you, usually I go in with a party promoter, but if I don't know any promoters and stuff, I have seen where the club charge people like just a lot, <laughs> like way more drinks are expensive. The clubs in Atlanta charge a five by five foot section like twelve hundred dollars like for one hour you still got to pay more for bottles like and it's like a bottle of Casamigos is like three hundred dollars at the club but it's like you could get a whole handle for like ninety nine dollars at the liquor store honestly for me personally i'm not judging anybody that still goes to the club all the time because like i said in my last video i'm still go out it's just like at the moment i'm just chilling i'm just noticing i just feel like i'm not really missing out like i don't have that fomo feeling of not being able to go out but i feel like that goes hand in hand with the fact that i did delete my instagram too so i'm kind of out of the loop when it comes to what type of moves are going on in the city but honestly it's the same thing like really all you're doing is you're getting ready putting on makeup drinking taking an uber or whatever driving with your home girl or whatever meeting people out somewhere they play the same music when you think about it like if you <laughs> like sometimes i really think in my head i imagine the club on mute like I'm, i imagine how the club scene would be like with no sound and it's just like damn when you don't add the sound it's like we look crazy we're all packed in these little ass sections trying to twerk and everything and taking shots and stuff. And when you do the math, that little piece of section, man, people be going broke over an hour long, five by five foot section, like it's crazy. Preferably for me now, I feel like I'm at that point in my life where I wanna travel and experience more. So it's like I'd rather go out to a club overseas or something, or even just LA or something like that. Like something different from Atlanta. Like Atlanta clubs are cool. Don't get me wrong. You're, if you're like not from Atlanta, 
and you just moved here or you're visiting here like definitely go out like atlanta is so much fun it's atlanta is a fun city in my opinion but it's just like girl i've been going out like i have been really going out so that's why i'm saying i'm at the point where all right i've already experienced a lot of what atlanta has to offer i kind of want to experience other adventures and get my endophamine or whatever that word is called from somewhere else other than atlanta and plus i want to like meet new people like new types of people because i meet the same types of people in atlanta if you know you know like it <sighs> Look, you know what I'm talking about. So the next topic on our list is social media again, but this time it's a little bit different. So my mom and I, she was telling me about this Netflix show. I can't even remember the Netflix show, y'all. But basically, it's this guy that helps people budget their money or whatever. So there's this one girl on the show. I think she was like 24. It's like different people, apparently. So this one girl, she's like 24. And in her head, she was saying that, oh, people think you make it if you actually like own a house and da da da. So this girl, she was 24. She actually owned her own townhome and everything. But yet, she hasn't had hot water in six months. If she doesn't go out with her friends, or when she does go out with her friends, her friends have to pay for her, like her meal and everything. But if you would look at her social media, her social media says otherwise. And it's just like, girl, just because you bought a house does not mean you made it. In fact, that's probably the worst way to say you made it because don't they call mor mortgages like signing a mortgage is like signing a death note or whatever because you're pretty much going to be paying on that house until you die like girl and then the fact that she hasn't had hot water for six months is crazy and apparently the guy said well have you told anything to hoa or anything like that because i mean that could be potentially a health issue right her hoa fee was like 500 dollars, which i'm like that's pretty high well i don't know if that's high or low but i mean that sounds high in my opinion she said she went to the next hoa meeting and mentioned the you know hot water scenario and apparently her hoa fee raised like 70 dollars after she explained her hot water situation so if you fast forward the show they they do like a where are they now and she allegedly sold her townhome moved into an apartment pretty much downsized and now she's living like a happier life and y'all that so the reason why i brought up that netflix episode is because i remember and i feel like people especially people who just graduated college and are in this phase of okay I'm transitioning between graduation and like real world and getting a real life job. That phase low key can be like the hardest phase in probably anybody's life. I mean, it was hard for me because you had to develop a whole new routine for yourself because I was so used to building my routine around school for like my whole life. So once I graduated college and also school, it made me have like some sort of a purpose you know it gave me a purpose to do something every day once that purpose was accomplished it's just like okay now what like what's next so that phase in life after graduation can be a little bit weird because some people they figure it out faster than others and that's okay like if you're the person that it takes you a minute to figure things out like look that's that's okay because you're gonna figure it out at the end of the day i remember i would compare myself to my peers because some people you know would have townhomes and houses or are able to buy you know the newest mercedes or amg and stuff like that meanwhile me and i don't even want to say meanwhile me because i'm I already have a lot. I have a really nice apartment. I have a Mercedes too. It's just older in this down the third. But it's just like comparison is a thief of joy, first off. And then second off, you don't know what that person really had to do to get that town home or get that car, this down the third. They may have a town home, but they may be in so much debt. Like there's this one guy who was on the show too and 
apparently he's a really big influencer but on the show he admitted that he's he has over two hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt which two hundred thousand dollars that's like damn near a quarter of a million dollars in debt so it's just stuff you have to think about even me like i would find myself comparing you know myself to other people but it, but it's like i have to realize that we are living two separate lives the older i'm getting the more i'm learning that a lot of people are going into debt to get the things that you see that they have on social media there's a reason why apps like affirm or Klarna, Klarna, you know, those afterpay type apps exist because people can't afford their lifestyle. That's why I am kind of grateful that I've stayed true to myself, true, true to my income, my tax bracket. I, I don't have any debt, no student loan debts, nothing like that. Like, that's a blessing, honestly. But yeah, don't compare yourself to people that you see on social media, even your own peers, even your best friend. So the last topic on my list is the Tarte drama again. Yes, I know I already talked about this in my last video, but I low-key gotta, like, not renege on what I said, but just go back. So first off, when I was talking about the room situation, I thought the room situation was on this most, most recent Tart Miami trip with the Formula One race, but this was actually at their Turks and Caicos or Dubai trip, so the room situation was a little bit different. And then second off, I did want to mention, so I was watching this one YouTuber, and she did bring up a good point about this whole Tart brand trip deal. So. Her main thing is that like, well, I don't want to say this is her main thing, but this is maybe what I'm comprehending from what she said. So like Tarte has found that stirring up controversy gets their brand more publicity. Because if you think about it, like on social media, just in general, it was like two, three weeks ago. Remember that girl was trying to take pictures at a baseball game and there are two girls behind her that were like laughing and making fun of her. And she like super, super edited the hell out of that video and went viral. She stirred up controversy. Like that's the thing with social media, like that I don't like about social media. It seems like nowadays either you have to be blonde hair, blue eyed, looking super young, but being super sexual on camera or creating like a controversy and Tarte knows this. So that's why Tarte is eating up all this like drama. Like even me making this video about the Tarte drama is like contributing to Tarte getting more exposure, which is annoying. So if you're watching my video, especially if you're like my complexion, don't shop at Tarte. There's so many other products you can buy that are way better than Tarte products, in my opinion. I do find it funny that Tarte now is starting to call each brand trip like episode one, episode two, episode three, almost like it's like reality TV. And the YouTuber made a good point where even on that last trip, the Dubai one or the Turks and Caicos one with the room situation, Tart knew that that was gonna stir up some type of drama. Cause if they were really trying to be fair to all of the influencers, they would have just booked a hotel and not a villa, in my opinion. Cause there's really nice hotels you could still book. But instead of booking a hotel, they booked a villa that had all sorts of different types of rooms cause they knew this would piss people off. And you know how on Bad Girls Club and this and the third, the first episode, the first fights is always about the rooms in the room situation so and tart knows that and i do feel like in 2023 well 2022 but definitely this year as well reality tv has gotten super super big like for example love is blind i literally just finished season four i definitely got to talk about that in another video love is blind love island the Bachelor, 2023 is a year for reality. Tart understands that in controversies and stuff. It is an interesting marketing strategy because I will say like, I'm not even gonna lie, like even I have been kind of like looking at Tarte's products, but again, I'm not gonna buy Tarte products because it's just other brands I can buy from. And the reason why I say that is because Tarte is known for just not catering towards people like us, like they're known they're known for that. Cause I remember even in 2018, 
which I had to like low key look this up. But once I seen the video, I was like, oh yes, I remember this in real time. Jackie Ina and Alyssa Ashley called out Tarte and like their shade ranges. Which speaking of going viral, I do kind of want to touch on the topic of going viral. I feel like people will do anything just to go viral to the point where people will lose their morals. It's like it's like society these days, especially in the social media world, it's all about numbers, which I get it. Like, I mean, I look, I get it because if you're actually trying to be social media famous and like make money off of social media, the numbers do matter. But the way you go about it matters more in my opinion. And me, I feel like I could have been big. Like I could have been like a super, super big celebrity or internet personality, but I want to take the more classier route and just be myself. And again, this is why I have to bring TikTok back into the picture because going viral really wasn't like as easy as it is now with TikTok. You know, you could easily make a new account Everybody knows TikTok does promote newer accounts compared to accounts that's been around for a while. But it's like once you go viral that one time, it's like you just want that feeling again, that high feeling of like going viral again. It becomes a very toxic downhill spiral in my opinion. And it's really, once you ruin your reputation, it's ruined. I mean, in my opinion, it's ruined in this day and age. All right, you guys, I feel like this video was low-key all over the place, so I'm going to have fun editing it. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye!